bad news. I'm Mark Espedakis. If you're a shopaholic, listen up. We have a consumer advisory coming up next. And with Y2K just around the corner, what should you think? A Y2K group gives you advice coming up. I'm tv 5 Jen Benavino. What will the rest of the week have in store for us? With weather conditions, will it remain cold or will temperatures rise? I'll have your complete weather watch forecast coming up. The Glaring University campus hosts a special gospel choir concert. Highlights from the event later in entertainment. I'm Don Ersitz, and coming up in sports, Marino has a little mishap. And if you thought you had a tough job, one boy gets his dream job, maybe. The story later. And coming up on Entertainment Beat, we'll take a look at this week's calendar of events. All this and more next. As TV5 News at 8 brings coverage closer to home. Good evening and welcome to TV5 News. I'm Dave Marsh. And I'm Christy Herman. Mark Despotakis joins us live from the newsroom with tonight's top story regarding credit cards and consumer spending each holiday season. Mark? Thanks, Dave and Christy. Well, a new survey ca came out this week saying that holiday shoppers spend are going to spend more this coming holiday season. We went out and talked to some folks in Clarion to see if they're going to be doing the same. It's tonight's top story. Take a look. According to a recent survey by the Dead Counselors of America, 64% of the and as much or more on holiday gifts this year. I've already spent more. <laughs> already spent more. Well, I'm spending with the money that I have. I've earned more money so I can spend. Okay. Those people that we spoke with had mixed opinions about their holiday shopping, but most agreed that they would be using credit cards this year. We're shopping with our credit cards on the net. Does that, does that make you a little worrisome? That... Uh, not really, because everybody knows who we are anyway. So I'm not really worried. The sites that we use are secured sites, and okay. so we're not worried about it. Or does that, uh, you know, using credit cards this year at all? I will be using them, but not a lot. So with consumers doing more holiday shopping this year, you need to be cautious. And here's some tips to help. Debt Counselors of America made these suggestions for a happier holiday season debt-wise. Avoid those buy-now-pay-later offers. Use low-rate major credit cards. Record your credit card purchases in your checkbook. That way, when your bill arrives, the money will be in your checking account to pay the bill in full. And avoid skip payment offers, then in the long run, will cause you to pay more interest and have larger bills. So I talked to some of those people out there today, as you could see, and some people actually told me they had their Christmas shopping totally done. So Dave and Christy, are you guys done with shopping yet? Not this one. Not quite yet. No. Got a time All right. to well, neither am I, so I guess we all even out. But once again, those tips were brought to you by the uh, Debt Counselors of America. So uh, if you're out there shopping, like Dave and Christy, since they haven't even started yet, <laughs> you can do that. Uh, th those tips will help you in the rest of the holiday season. Back to you guys. Thanks, Mark. A Clarion County woman was seriously injured after her vehicle drove head-on into a school bus. Tara Dawn Schick was driving on Route 68 near the Comet Market when the accident occurred. Schick could not make the turn in the road and headed straight for the bus. Schick was taken to Clarion Hospital by ambulance, then flown to UPMC Presbyterian Hospital in Pittsburgh, where she is listed in critical condition. Three passengers in the school bus were treated and released from the Clarion Hospital. Seventeen people were arrested in a child pornography case. The investigation started after a Clarion man was arrested. Samuel L. Labrier was arrested for possession and distribution of child pornography over the Internet. The investigation took over eight months and was conducted by the State Police Computer Crime Unit. A Ramersburg woman waived her rights to a hearing on Tuesday in Clarion. Catherine J. Payton is accused of shaking a three-month-old baby on two separate occasions. Payton is charged with simple assault and recklessly endangering another person. Police acted after receiving a complaint from the Clarion County Children and Youth Services. Witnesses told police officers that they saw Payton hold her baby in her lap as it was crying, and then she lifted the infant under her arm and shook her. When Payton was interviewed, she explained that she did pick up her baby but never shook her. An 18-year-old Mayport man waived his rights to a preliminary hearing on charges he stole $400 from a 7-Eleven store where he was employed. James L. King was charged with theft and possession of marijuana and drug paraphernalia. He allegedly stole the money from a safe at the Clarion Convenience Store at different times. Officials report that King admitted taking the money to pay off his bills. The Oil City Derrick is reporting that tensions between the Butler County Coroner's Office and state police are starting to settle down. The controversy arose after the shooting death of Edward Strawbridge. Coroner William F. Young Jr. claims police did not allow his son, the chief deputy coroner, onto the scene for several hours after the man was drowned. The concern comes from the fact that an ambulance crew moved the body to a certain extent. 
Strawbridge's family is planning to hire a pathologist to perform a separate autopsy. Under the state law, it requires the body and its surroundings to remain untouched until the coroner gets a chance to view the area. The question about how a tied Oil City Council race will be decided has hit a snag. Voters in Districts 5 and 7 filed petitions to have the ballot boxes to be reopened. Monday was the day that the election code specifies candidates with tie votes must throw dice to determine the winner. The procedure to determine whether a vote recount will end, either Janine Bodeguth or John Sterling to council came to a halt yesterday. Apparently there were defects in the petitions filed. Guth and Sterling are tied at 1,180 votes apiece. Hillary Hager and Carrie Mason earned prestigious recognition on Tuesday as they were mentioned as two of Pennsylvania's top 20 to watch in USA Today. Hager helped lead Franklin to the PIA Class AAA to the semifinals last year. She has already signed a letter of intent to uh, attend Vanderbilt University. Mason was named the league's MVP and led the TCAC Division II in scoring for Cranberry. Two individuals in the Oil City area are giving their time this holiday season. Joseph and Anna Marie Walker are helping out with Friends for Food. Three years ago, the two were on the receiving end of Thanksgiving Day dinners courtesy of Friends for Food campaign. Since then, they have been able to help by giving back for the past two years. They are able to give out a good holiday meal. On Saturday, they will each be helping with the distribution of food to area families. The campaign lets people know what Thanksgiving is all about. Firefighters across the nation deal with more structure fires in the winter than at any other time of year. As colder temperatures set in, there is an increased risk in fires. The problem rises when residents tend to heat their homes. Heating devices such as kerosene heaters, electrical heaters, and fires increase the risk of a fire hazard. Oil City Fire Chief Butch Huey says to decrease the chance of an uncontrolled fire in your home, replace or retest fire detectors and replace their batteries to make sure they are functioning properly. And use careful supervision around the equipment used to heat your home. Coming up after the break, the Y2K phenomenon is a problem that has us looking to choose a the new millennium. We will have some advice to help you survive the year 2000, and the University of Pittsburgh finally has finds an ally in a battle over a same-sex marriage. Also, Jeff Say joins us from the Clarion Call newsroom with highlights from this week's issue, and we'll take a look at the headlines from tomorrow's edition of the Clarion News. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. In the early years, young children cannot stand on their own. Uniting parents and children is an important part of the life of a community. Stand for Children encourages people to make a personal commitment to stand for the health of children. 300,000 Americans marched in Washington, D.C. last June to support Stand for Children Day. Stand for Children seeks to lift the belief that children need our help to stand. I'm the man. It's a birthday. Exercised lately. Go for the mouthful. Go for the fun. Go on, go for go cake. Go for cake. for everyone. Just one stack is what it takes. And it's go for, go for, go for cakes. Open wide. Stuff your face. There's always room for more. Go for cakes. Oh. Empty the box. Exercise lately. Till you explode. Sad. Looking back now, the things you go through in life. Scary. The worst thing about being on welfare was uh, at Christmas time. I couldn't get my kids what they really wanted. I had to get a better life for my girls and myself. I got off welfare. I got a good job. Makes me the happiest mother in the world. I live for my girls. We're not asking you to hire everyone on welfare. Just one. Eight. Anchored by Christy Herman. Dave Marsh. Jan Bevavino with TV5 Weather. Don Ursich with Sports. Now from the news team bringing coverage closer to home, this is TV5 News. Welcome back to TV5 News. Jeff Day joins us with the highlights from tomorrow's Clarion Call. Jeff? Good evening. Headlines for the Thursday, November 18th, 1999 include College Press Day took place last Friday along with Board of Student Governor Presidents meeting on Saturday. Be sure to check the newsstands for Thursday's edition of the Clarion Call. I'm Jeff Say for TV5 News.
Thanks, Jeff. And taking a look at the headlines from tomorrow's edition of the Clarion News today, the Clarion County Legal Council rejects an election recount. The first year 2000 Clarion County budget proposal holds off new taxes, and the Clarion Area Authority approves its second rate hike this year. These stories and more can be found in our newspaper exchange partner, the Clarion News. The Clarion County Y2K Committee is worried about people's reaction to Y2K. The committee is trying to get the word spread that the majority of companies and businesses are ready for the, new, for the problems ahead. Banks have started working on the bugs long before others have even attempted the situation. The Y2K Committee is also trying to warn residents about scams concerning the event. Do not give your credit card number or bank information over the phone to people saying they are dealing with Y2K compliance. And this story tops our look at state news. The University of Pittsburgh has found a friend in its battle over whether it should provide benefits to same-sex partners of employees. The legislature yesterday approved a bill that says municipalities cannot tell state or state-related universities that they must provide benefits to same-sex partners of employees. Such universities and colleges can provide same-sex benefits if they choose to do so on their own. Pitt is in a battle with a former lecturer who complained that the university wrongly ignored a city ordinance banning discrimination against gays and lesbians when it refused to provide benefits for her lesbian partner. The Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency is hosting a statewide victim services conference today through Friday in Camp Hill, Cumberland County. Nearly 300 victims, advocates, prosecutors, judges, police officers, probation and parole officers, and health care professionals will be attending the conference. An FBI agent has testified that Dean McGuigan was wired twice in an attempt to coax a confession from his stepfather after McGuigan's ex-prostitute girlfriend was murdered. Agent Brett Shields was the last defense witness in the conspiracy to commit murder for hire trial of 38-year-old Ricardo Murillo of Las Vegas. Architects planning new stadiums for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Pirates promise to provide plenty of restrooms, but they don't want to be forced to build more than they already have been planned for. These are for women, and this is required by a county ordinance. The Allegheny County health officials met today to consider the architect's request. A tax increase could be on the horizon for Montgomery County residents. The money would be used to preserve open space. The plan calls for 10% property tax rates hike into $10 million. Commissioner Jay Mazza says without the increase, there is no money to budget to buy the vanishing land. In an effort to combat marketing fraud in Pennsylvania, U.S. Attorney Michael Stiles, representative of the U.S. Postal Services, a member of the state government, will hold a news conference in Philadelphia to launch a consumer education drive. They say telemarketing fraud is the most pervasive form of white-collar crime. Coming up after the break, a shocking discovery in the investigation into Egypt Air Flight 990, and Russian President Yeltsin tells a conference of world leaders to back off on their Chechnya bombing. Also, tonight's Health Beat takes a look at a recent outbreak of scarlet fever, and a major healthcare conglomerate is facing a breakup. And Jen Bevavino will join us from the TV5 Weather Center with a look at your local forecast. All this and more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. Introducing new frequent phone hours. Use the phone just eight hours a week and get this free phone cradle. Use it 12 hours and get a speaker phone. Use it 15 hours and get this cool headset. Or stay on the phone 20 hours a week and get a pasty complexion, flabby body, and, and a, a great, great new nickname, nickname at school. Exercise lately. to be there. I want my mother to be there. My hair is going to be done so beautiful. A lot of music, a nice blue dress. I want to be beautiful for every single person that goes there. If I get shot, I want to have a nice funeral. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. Help stop the violence. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for free information. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. It's not just about making plans. It's about making a difference. And taking an interest, not just earning it. At Edward Jones, it's about more than investing. It's about knowing you. My every hope, my life, my world, it all begins with a dream. Edward Jones, investing in you and your dreams. In Clarion, see Gary Martin, located on Main Street, phone 226-7896. And welcome back to TV5 News. Taking a look at news from around the nation, a federal law enforcement source says a crew member on Egypt Air Flight 990 is heard saying, quote, I made my decision now, end quote. 
He says that just moments before the autopilot is turned off and the plane goes into a dive. The federal law enforcement official says the crew member is the co-pilot seat spoke in Arabic. The statement on the cockpit voice recorder has been translated to read, quote, I made my decision now, I put my faith in God's hands, end quote. The official says investigators think the crew member was alone in the cockpit at the time. Another source says investigators think the crew member was a relief co-pilot who faced retirement early next year. Russian President Boris Yeltsin is warning world leaders to stay off the topic of Chechnya at their upcoming security summit. Yeltsin is in Istanbul, Turkey for the two-day conference starting tomorrow. He says he'll address the representatives of 55 countries, urging them not to criticize the Russian bombing campaign. Yeltsin will take the stage before President Clinton and the other world leaders, and his speech could set the tone for the meeting and affect its outcome. Yeltsin says Russia is within its bounds to put down a separatist movement that he says is backed by Muslim extremists. Some of the worst of Hurricane Lenny is blasting the Virgin Islands. At 11 a.m. Eastern Time, the storm was centered just 30 miles south of St. Croix. Its winds and rain have already ripped off roofs, hurled boats onto the shore, and flooded homes with up to a foot of water. The governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands went on the radio to warn of the severe damage. He also asked President Clinton to declare St. Croix a disaster area. The governor of Puerto Rico says tens of thousands of his people have lost water and power services, but the main body of the storm has passed Puerto Rico. Lenny is rated as a Category 4 storm with winds of 135 miles per hour. Watchdog groups and lawmakers say alcohol warning labels are too hard to read. The American Medical Association is joining anti-substance abuse and religious groups in a call for changes in the rules. They say as things stand now, the government labels are difficult to spot. The warnings point out the dangers of alcohol to pregnant women and drivers, but critics say that in many cases they're displayed vertically or they blend in with the brand label. The Center for Science and the Public Interest says that makes it hard to spot, much less read. A spokesman for the beer industry says brewers are in line with both the letter and the spirit of the law. In tonight's Health Beat, just two years after forming a massive new health care conglomerate, the Geisinger Health System and Penn State's prestigious Milton S. Hershey Medical Center is heading for a breakup. A closed door meeting of the Penn State Geisinger Board of Directors is scheduled for tomorrow. Also, a new study says computers used to help diagnose patient ailments are more helpful to medical students than to medical doctors. Results of that study are conducted at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center and are published in today's Journal of the American Medical Association. Several students in a suburban Pittsburgh elementary school have contracted scarlet fever, prompting officials to alert parents and classmates. A spokesperson for the Crafton School District says Phillips Elementary School has been disinfected, even though the disease cannot be transmitted through the air. Well, it has been getting noticeably colder outside, and Jen Bevavino is here with a look at your latest local forecast. Jen? Dave, taking a brief look at Clarion's current and extended weather conditions, taking a brief glance behind me at our satellite imagery map, you will notice conditions, cloud formations, lying on the southern tier of the state at the moment. These cloud formations will be moving easterly throughout the rest of the week. We will be seeing its effects later on this weekend around Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We will be seeing its effects in, rain, in the form of rain showers. So do keep this in mind, although conditions throughout Friday will be clear. Taking a look at our frontals map now, for tomorrow, our conditions will be rising, temperatures that is. We will be seeing temperatures rise high into the 50s region. You will notice that we were engaged, encased in the middle of a high pressure zone. Taking a look at our highs map now, say we were high into the higher, lower 40s region, excuse me, and we will be seeing those temperatures rise throughout the rest of, rest of the week. Taking a look at our lows map now, you will notice that we were low into the 20s region, although these temperatures will be warming throughout the rest of the week. Taking a look at our precipitation map now, you will notice that the precipitation today was clear. We saw no signs of precipitation today, but keeping in mind, we will see the precipitation later this weekend. Taking a look at our five-day planner now, you will notice for Thursday, it will be sunny with a high of 52, a low of 23. For Friday, partly cloudy, with a high of 61 and a low of 35. So for Saturday, showers with a high of 53 and a low of 38. For Sunday, showers once again with a high of 51 and a low of 33. And for Monday, unfortunately, rain showers again with a high of 53 and a low of 32. And keep in mind, later tonight, 40 minutes into the newscast tonight, we will be seeing some meteor showers. It's supposed to be a spectacular sight tonight, so do go outside after the newscast and look up to the heavens because it will be a spectacular sight. So just keep that in mind. And this has been Clarence current and extended weather conditions. Back to you, Christy. Jen, coming up after the break, a male college student.
job. And Don Erthig will be here with tonight's edition of Sports in Two Minutes. Also, Carolyn Kelly will give us this week's calendar of events. I'll listen more as TV5 News brings coverage closer to home. Standing out from the crowd is easy when you stop in at Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all with many different styles. With our newly expanded shoe and accessory department, you're surely to find that special touch to enhance that new outfit. And if you have a fashion question, our experts are here to help. That's Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall, just off exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. Sunday from noon till 5. Where have all the children gone? Long time passing. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. You can help stop the violence. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Not one more lost life, not one more grieving family, not one more. Gone to graveyards one by one, oh, when will we ever learn? News travels fast. That's why you need the speed and accuracy of a news team that brings coverage closer to home. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night, join TV5 News for Clarion's only live local newscast on television at 8. Tune in for the latest in regional, state, and national news. Plus, with our newspaper exchange partner, The Clarion News, teaming up to bring coverage closer to home every Tuesday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Clarion's only live local newscast on television at 8 is here on TV5. Introducing the Italian Misa Trio from Domino's Pizza, located in the 800 Center in Clarion. Domino's Pizza offers a wide variety of pizza, wings, breadsticks, and hoagies. And for just $9.99, get a large unlimited topping pizza. Stop in or have Domino's deliver. That's Domino's Pizza, located in the 800 Center. Phone 226-4060. That's Domino's Pizza, 226-4060. I'm Don Arsich here again with the Sports in Two Minutes. The ballots are in for the National League MVP and the award goes to Chipper Jones. Jones had almost all of the first place votes. Houston slugger Jeff Bagwell was second and Arizona's Matt Williams was third. It seems as if Dan Marino is jinxed during a season that is supposed to be his Super Bowl victory. After being cleared by doctors to practice, Dan never made it to practice. He was in a car accident. He nor anyone else was hurt in the crash, but passengers in Marino's car were complaining of neck pain. Marino says that the accident happened when he took his eyes off of the road when he spilt some coffee on his lap. Well, in honor of Payne Stewart, the PGA will name an award after him. The Payne Stewart Award will be given to the Tour Championship to the player that who conveys professionalism, character, community work, and charity. Now let's take a look at that BCS Top 5 in college football. Florida State holds on to number one. The Hokies jump up to number two. Nebraska sneaks into three. Florida's at four. And Tennessee rounds out the top five. And with a loss this week, Penn State has dropped out of any race for a championship at number 11. Well, that's going to do it for this week. And don't forget to check out the Subway KFC Classic that will feature the men's and women's basketball teams. Tip-off is Friday at 8 p.m. That's it for sports. Now back to Dave and Christy. Thanks, Donnie. Music was in the air this weekend as Gospel Fest hit the Claring University campus. Our own Brian Cook was there. Brian? Nine was held last Saturday in Gimmel Multipurpose Room to promote Christian beliefs through music in an academic setting. The Lift Every Voice Gospel Choir hosted the event. Four choirs from Western Pennsylvania took part in the concert. President of the Lift Every Voice Gospel Choir, Jeremy Nesmith, thought the program fulfilled his vision of the evening. And that is just to attack the wellness will in a spiritual aspect with biblical principles. And um, what we want to do is through gospel music, by uh, bringing in different artists so they can see that the life that we sing about has to also be exemplary in the life that we live. One of the highlights included a special guest performance by the Love Outreach Choir directed by Minister Trini Massey. Their performance energized the crowd. The charismatic director enjoyed his visit here. And my vision is to take the choir all over the country ministering the gospel and all over the world to the nations to let young people know that you can be saved, have fun, dance before the Lord with all your might and still keep a Christian walk with him. If you missed it this year, you can attend Gospel Fest 2000 next semester. For TV5 News, I'm Brian Cook. Thanks, Brian. Carolyn Kelly joins us now with this upcoming week's of a calendar of events. Carolyn? 
Thanks. Good evening and welcome to Entertainment Beat, where we will be looking at this week's calendar of events. Thursday, November 18th, and Friday, November 19th, catch the dance concert going on in the auditorium at 8 p.m. On Saturday, November 20th, the Clarion University Novice Debate Tournament will be in Founders Hall. The times for this event will be announced. And on Sunday, November 21st, the Student Chamber Concert will be at 7 p.m. in Hart Chapel Theater. Come see a Christmas Carol on Monday, November 22nd in the auditorium beginning at 7.30 p.m. Tickets can be bought in advance from the Gemmel Info Desk, and all CU students with their ID will be admitted for free. And finally, Tuesday starts a Thanksgiving break. Enjoy your turkey dinner on Thursday the 25th. That's all for this week. See you in two weeks. I'm Carolyn Kelly, TV5 News. Thanks, Carolyn. College student Chris Reese has a dream job. Reese starts work today as one of the few male retail clerks for Victoria's Secret. He'll be working at a store in a mall in Medford, Oregon. Reese says he applied for the job on a dare from a friend, but he insists he's all business when it comes to selling unmentionables. Reese says it's a good job, but admits it will be a great opportunity to meet girls. And Reese says his gender will be an advantage when a guy comes in looking for a scanny something for his wife or girlfriend. Reese isn't sure what he's going to do with one of the perks of being a Victoria's Secret salesperson, free samples of the merchandise. And I thought being on TV was a dream job. Well, Jen Bevino joins us for one final look at your Clarion area forecast. Jen? Taking a brief glance, glance back to Clarion's current weather conditions, we will notice for Thursday it will be sunny with a high of 52 and a low of 23. For Friday, partly sunny with a high of 61 and a low of 35. And for Saturday, unfortunately, rain showers with a high of 53 and a low of 38. That's Clarion's brief recap. Back to you, Dave and Christy. Thanks, Jen. That wraps it up for tonight's broadcast. We hope that you have a great Thanksgiving and we'll see you in two weeks. I'm Christy Herman. For the entire TV news team, I'm Dave Marsh. Have a good night and a safe holiday. And we're leaving you now with coverage of last Saturday's Clarion Gospel Choir concert. Thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you for your love. I want to thank you for your power. I want to thank you for protecting me. Every, every, every hour. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.